right, hey guys, sorry, long time no talk. I've had a bit of a cold, I've been away. Uh, but I'm gonna talk about some of the new, really good time-saving features that are inside of Plus Design Build and Plus Architect that we haven't spoken to you about that will save you a heap of time. So uh, stick around, guys, we'll check it out. All right, so vignettes, guys, I know we've spoken about them. If you're not sure how to get them, I'm gonna to go to a blank SketchUp file and show you how to get them and how to utilize them and how to use some of the new features with them so that essentially you can learn how to get more done in less time. All right, so help and support up to the top. Scroll down, I'm gonna get a double story vignette here. And there we go, I have a double story vignette. Now, I have spoken about vignettes before. Basically, these are parametric so you can copy from them. And when I actually set this up, I set it up so my floor joist spacing was correct as per the span of floor joist. Now, if you're an architect or a building designer and you don't really care too much about it, Use what's in here, it's underdone a little bit. Uh, but if you did want to know, you can go and use uh, software like Design IT or Span Tables, and basically you'll see how this will save me a heap of time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle over here, no, in no size in particular. I'm going to right click wall, and I'm going to create a similar wall. I can make changes if I want to, but you know I might want to change the height of the wall. However, I'm just going to quickly, you know, I'm going to split it because I'm going to show you how to do sloping blocks and how to get your geometry correct without having to know a whole heap of measurements. So what I did there is I basically just copied uh, this uh, wall type. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly put a rectangle over here and I'm going to split this up, get over there, right? And I'm going to put this here, right? And I'm, I'm going to create a floor. So to do that, I can right click on this floor and go floor joist, create similar joist. Select the face that I want to do it on and go submit. Right now, because the face was low, I actually needed to lift the joist up a touch. I'm gonna to quickly just do that move. Therefore my joist sit on top of that plate. And you'll also notice that these bearers, and because I just did a random size, you know, the, the bearers or girders don't act, aren't even, and they don't need to be because the maximum span of the joist is that spacing. If you change the size of the joist, you could up the size of the joist and decrease the span and have two. However, uh, I'm going to change the direction of the joist. So I'm just gonna go submit again, and I'm actually going to go this way. Oh, I should've went the other way, this way. And you'll notice the bearers went the other end. And here's the benefit of the vignette. If I actually took this engage peer out of the center here or isolate a peer and go move and go from the outside of my footing and control it will actually put the footing in the right location I obviously didn't draw the face at the right location down here all right and my peer is sitting underneath my joist which means that if I actually went or my bearer if I went to control and times two I now have those joists working to spacings. And obviously I can space them the other way as well. Select these and go over here and go move and control. If we go to transparent mode, you'll notice that I now have my bearer spacings and joist spacings correct. And that's where a vignette uh, really comes into its own. So guys, setting up this vignette so that it is actually correct, uh, according to spacing, saves you a heap of time and makes you design more feasibly. In this particular case, I probably would have changed my joy sizes because the size that I drew, which is just random, uh, enabled me to cut some cost out of this project. Regardless, let's move on. All right, so I get that out of transparent mode. Now my walls are actually going to be correct as well. So if I go right click, walls, and create similar wall, I can now go through and put my walls in so that they actually work the way that they should. A little bit of trouble with inferencing. And you know what, I need more joists in there later. I can do that later. But I'm gonna go just go shift, shift and right, and now I have my walls. Now I did mention that we would talk about split level and how we would do it, but before I do that, I'm just gonna show you a cool new feature that we've actually added. I'm going to go to my 2D mode, which is top down. And if I actually right click on a wall, go to walls, you'll notice that I have add adjacent wall. And what this enables me to do is instead of running a tape measure or a guideline, I can type in the distance I want my 
wall to go from the end. And there is a tutorial on this guy, guys, um, uh, but I can see that it's clicked to my, my bearer there, which is probably a good idea for an internal wall that's load bearing to click it to a bearer. But if I wanted to say type in two meters, enter, it reloaded my wall tool, enabling me to change to an internal wall. And when I actually go and start to draw my wall, my wall will actually be two meters from the end. And what that did is it saved me from using my tape measure tool and having to go through multiple times and put lines across my drawing, which kind of get cluttered and in the way. It's a huge time saver. You should check it out. All right. So, and I also spoke about split level. Uh, and there's a new feature that we've added in here that is uh, enables us to uh, utilize uh, or automatically change the height of walls according to what it is we selected. So if I said in this particular instance, we're going to select these three walls and these are actually going to drop down to whatever our contour survey says. I'm just going to drop it down to here. Right. Obviously, those walls need to be lifted and I don't want to have to measure all this and mess about. I just actually want to select my floor joist and I want to right click on my walls, walls, project walls to joist. Now I've actually got my walls the correct height without having to take a measurement. Let's get rid of this face under here so we can see what's going on a bit better. Right now it also works with other things as well. So I could have had multiple splits here and then actually sent all of my walls to a height. And you'll also probably, if you've been following along with what we've been doing, we've also got send walls to roof. So if I had a, a sloping or skillion roof on here, I could have actually sent it to that height. But it might be a height plane that I have to work with for council. So let's just say I said, let's just go rectangle on top of these walls here. I could say walls create face from walls, but I'm just going to quickly draw a rectangle on top. Here, and it could be anywhere. Right. Select it, and I'm going to rotate this just any old distance. Just This might be our height plane from council, right? If I select these walls here, and I push shift when I did it, I can go right click, walls, project walls to face, to selected face, right? Now, that has saved me a heap of time, especially when I go and look at an instruction mode because everything has now been projected to the correct height. And this has saved me a heap of time. Now I could get now go through and start putting my windows and doors in. Add window. And I don't know what type of window I've got here. And my walls are correct. All. Right. I could also go and, you know, if I said, oh, you know, it's starting to get too big, too bulky, I don't want to go that high, just grab that face again, go Q, and let's just put it down this way. I can select that face again, and these walls here, right click, walls, project walls to select the face. Right. Now I think you'll start to see what's going on. Now I could have had my ceilings raked as well. At the moment my ceilings are level and therefore, you know, I could have a, a mezzanine floor in there or whatever it is that I wanted to do. But the amount of time this saves you and enables you to get on with your design and stop messing about with software is unbelievable. So guys, don't forget to check out Plus Architect and Plus Design Build. If you like the video, push like. If you dislike the video, push dislike and tell us why. Don't forget to follow our channel and tell your friends. Good on you guys. Cheers.